So Chris and I here tackled uh, integrating the Nexus 2 board with the PIC24. We actually used the DS PIC24 chip, which is apparently the PIC24 uh, with DSP capabilities, not that we actually use them. Uh, we'll get the next slide. So the basic requirements for this is take the Nexus 2 board and accept input using a PS2 keyboard. Once you get a complete set of data, up to 255 characters or terminated by a return key, send that across to the PIC24 over UART to, and what the UART does is calculates a CRC16 uh, checksum, which is a 16-bit checksum, so you get a um, short. And then once the UART or um, PIC calculates that, send it back across to the Nexus 2 or the same UART connection, and finally display it on the Nexus 2's LCD. So this is a mock diagram for uh, things connected, uh, mainly in the uh, Nexus 2. We've got the uh, PIC24 uh, up there connected uh, via UART. Um, the keyboard, uh, although yeah, I didn't, wasn't very clever, at, uh, so I didn't come to me to think to uh, hook that up uh, via UART, but um, I found a uh, third-party uh, PS2 controller and interfaced that uh, with uh, GPIO. And there are two there because I had some trouble uh, in, uh, handling both the input and output on the same GPIO. Um, so that's kind of a hack, I guess. Um, you've got the LCD there, of course. I've seen that one on it. Uh, LEDs, mainly for uh, debugging and uh, just uh, some, uh, you know, for seeing what's in uh, uh, register, etc. And uh, you your buses and uh, you know, the standard stuff. Uh, keyboards uh, that uh, scan DID there is hooked up to the interrupt controller. Um, uh, scan DID is a signal out from the uh, PS2 controller, and that uh, goes uh, asserts itself when the, there is valid data uh, coming out of the PS2 controller. So that's so when yeah, I handle that, I basically pull that out of the uh, pull that out, copy it into a buffer, and then uh, tell it that I've done a right and then good to uh, get the next uh, a couple other interesting notes about the bridge here between Nexus 2 and the 24 We were originally going to go through the RS-232 uh, plug in the Nexus 2 board, but the um, PIC24 demo board actually expects the UART to go out through USB, and it does its own conversion, and for example, if you're going to talk with Windows, you'd install a driver. So what you can do, though, is the board has a series of 20 or so pins, and two of those are actually the RX and TX pins. So we remap the UART from the RS-232 port to one of the side bays on the Nexus 2 and just connect it with wires over to the PIC24. And we're also drawing our power for the PIC24 off of the Nexus port. Um, like I said, I have a buffer for uh, taking the uh, scan codes uh, during the uh, interrupt handler. And uh, put those into a buffer, and, uh, and then basically continue on doing whatever I was doing. Uh, I've got a main loop uh, that basically uh, cycles through those scan codes uh, and uh, filters out to okay what key was you know, was just entered. Uh, does some uh, you know uh, you know does a lookup table to find out okay what key it was, and then uh, put that puts that key into a, another buffer to the output to, to the uh, uh, UART. That's basically what all this is here. So you've got some um, uh, uh, initialization stuff here, enabling interrupts. Uh, check the uh, buffer, check the um, uh, scan buffer, check the buffer that the uh, interrupt puts stuff into. Um, I've got a flag that is set. If uh, uh, enter is hit, enter is pretty much my is the um, uh, key that triggers um, their triggers the send. Um, if uh, the buffer for to be sent is um, full. Uh, uh, the, uh, LCD, or the LCD screen will display a uh, message saying it's full and prompting the user to put the enter key to go ahead and send that to the, over to the update for four. Um, I should also note that the uh, return key actually isn't sent across, so only the keys before you press return actually get sent. Uh, the PIC24 side is a bit simpler. Um, you actually, the first thing you do is you initialize the oscillator 
inside the P24. So you can change the frequency of the oscillator in code, which is interesting. There's two different, a uh, pre-gain essentially and a post, and uh, they have uh, documentation saying the calculation that you use, and you set these two values, and it sets an internal frequency based off that. So after that, we initialize the UR, and then the PIC24 just starts spinning and waiting for a count. We send across the count as one byte, hence the 255 character limit. It's convenient to send across. Once the PIC receives the count, it's echoed back, which the idea there being if the PIC had to initialize any internal data structures, it could do all that before it responded. And then once the Nexus 2 gets the count back, it actually checks if they're the same. We'll report an error if there's not. But if it's successful, it begins sending across. And it'll send all the characters in one go. The PIC receives them all, calculates the CRC16, which is basically a repeated call to a calculate function over and over again. Finally, it converts the short into four chars and sends each one of those back across. And the Nexus 2 simply has to display each character as it receives them. So finally, for our testing, um, we separated this out, each of us, I focused on the PIC, he focused on the Nexus 2, and that provided a nice clean break for uh, work because the only communication was over the yard, so once we agreed on the protocol there, each could work on their code base separately. Um, for the PIC 24, the CRC 16 calculations were all unit tested, those were written separately and then integrated in after I was happy with those, and the system level and UR testing was performed using the UR capability of the PIC 2. The PIC 2 actually I found out, um, not only does it program the demo board, you can use it as a logic analyzer, a makeshift oscilloscope, and a UR. So I was really surprised at everything it could do. Um, and really happy with it once I found out everything it could. Okay. Uh, some of the testing, or uh, how we got started on this, was uh, we first uh, wanted to make sure we could get some sort of communication between the boards uh, with the UR before we uh, moved on to the rest of the project. So uh, we basically sent the test signal over, and we just wanted to get some sort of acknowledgement that there was something being sent. So that was our first uh, milestone, I suppose. Um, then, uh, as far as testing the UART, I uh, uh, found that uh, tying the uh, TX back into the RX uh, line actually helped a lot with um, uh, testing that, not having to have another device out there. Um, uh, later, I uh, uh, got a hold of a um, USB to, uh, or RS-232 to USB, uh, serial to a uh, USB uh, converter, so I put that up to the uh, PC and I can actually see that uh, output on the terminal. Uh, that was actually kind of exciting to see. Um, as far as the uh, PS2 controller is concerned, um, I found a uh, VHDL implementation on that online. Uh, uh, and uh, I interfaced that using GPIO. Actually, two GPIOs, but anyways, um, some of the stuff uh, was, um, I was uh, first off, I wanted to make sure that I was getting into the internet controller. That was uh, my first uh, milestone for that there. Uh, once I got that, I knew that, like, okay, I'm getting here, okay, I'm like, getting the right scan codes, and I have the keys here. So, um, after that, um, yeah, I tested the yeah, different scan codes, um, and uh, I can go ahead and make sure I'm getting uh, decoding the scan codes. And, uh, final step, we'll hook it all up and make sure it works. Uh, one final thing I'll say with testing the PIC24, one nice thing was it being a um, hardcore microcontroller is you can actually use the IDE software and set breakpoints and debug through. But one problem I ran into when the board was on debug mode is I could talk to the Nexus 2 over UART, but the PIC couldn't get anything back from the Nexus 2. I'm still not sure why, so if anyone figures that out, I'd like to know. Uh, but it runs fine in release mode essentially, not debug. So I don't know if the voltage is too high, uh, drawing power from the PIC kit 2, or what the issue is. I wasn't able to figure it out. Head over here to the next two for demo. So, let's uh, 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 the awesome wiring. <laughs> 